online instruction series. During this session, we are going to build a website using Google Sites. Yes, you in this webinar will make a website. I'm Mike Baker. Diane and Renee are also joining us today. Before we begin, please make sure your microphone is muted. It's not a huge crowd, so if you do have a question, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. But you can also use the chat, which Diane and Renee will be monitoring. After these 30 minutes pass, I will open the floor up to any kind of question that you may have, or if you want to use the 15 minutes to explore more of Google Sites, we can certainly do that as well. A recorded version of this workshop will be uploaded tonight. It will be available from that same page you used to access today's session. Make sure you check that site starting tomorrow for what we're offering next week. In addition to a daily session, we are also going to offer some virtual office hours where people will be able to pop in and ask us questions because we're assuming, I think rightfully so, that some issues could pop up as you begin to work with your students using this new online platform. Finally, please note that this session does have a hard stop time. That time for the session is three o'clock today. So once we hit that point, this session will end. If I don't answer some of your questions before the end of the session, please just send me an email. My address is mbaker at ciu10.org. So before I jump in uh, to the, the formal part of the presentation, I do want to show you something new that just came today from Google. And this is a website that they designed realizing that people are all of a sudden <laughs> delivering instruction online. So Google realized they have all these tools and maybe there are people who are looking at the tools for the first time. So I put the link in the chat box so you can click on that and it will open a tab in your browser. But the site is teachfromhome.google and it covers all of the Google tools. Now, if you're not a Google district, if you're a PO or Clearfield, you use Microsoft, the principles are going to be the same. So just replace docs with Word and there you go. So there are a lot of nice tutorials here and ideas of way to ways to use those tools. So let's talk about how we make a website. So what I would like you to do on your screen right now, you will see the directions. So we're going to use Mentimeter. So I'd like you to open a browser tab and go to the address you see on the screen, menti.com, and enter the code 705965. And you will see one question. There are three questions. I will advance to the next question after we get some answers here. So how many websites have you made? I've given you three different ranges there. Now I'm starting to see some votes come in. I love how these dots bounce off of each other when they get there. I'll wait about 20 seconds longer to get a few more votes in. Okay, I'm not seeing any more. If you, if you still want to vote, that's fine. I'll advance the slide in a second. So two of you have not built we have one person who is a, a grizzled veteran here that's uh, made a bunch of sites and one that's tried one or two of them. So let me ask you this question then. Even if you haven't made a website, wh what would you predict, how long would it take you to actually make a website? Are we talking about minutes? Are we talking about hours? Or do you think it would take days to make a website? It would take me months. <laughs> That's not an option, but the days, I guess there could be 30 days. That would be a month. So you could answer days. Well, minutes, that seems like a, it's pretty ambitious to think that you could make a website in minutes. Um, hours, I, that sounds reasonable. No one said days. So I think everybody's confident this is something they can do in a day. All right, I have one more question for you. 
give me some ideas. And I think I gave you room to give three different ideas. How would teachers, how could teachers use a website? And these open-ended ones always take a little bit longer for people to answer because they're typing in responses. Well, Mike, I was doing mine on my phone and it, it won't advance the slide. Okay, let me try something because it's telling me on the screen that the voting was yeah, stopped. So I thought Andy it was, Andy yeah, said it should work now. Okay. It should be yes, working now. Yes, it does. I, I thought that that was just a remnant on my screen that wasn't accurate, so but it was telling me that it was stopped. I apologize. Oh, here come some words. Awesome. Let's see what else we come up with. All right, using the chat window, what are we seeing? How is this being created? Somebody want to explain it? Or you can unmute. There are only 11 of us here. If you want to unmute and yeah. tell me what's happening. I will tell you this is a word cloud that may give you, give you a hint as to what is happening. Give you about 15 seconds longer, see if somebody wants to tell me how this is created. Diane says the larger words, in this case, they all look the same, but larger words are, are more frequently submitted. As people enter those words, they are showing up. And now we see collaboration. Someone entered collaboration again, and now it's larger. So this is a real good way to get a sense of the big important issues. Now, it assumes that everybody uses the same word. So if you use collaborate and collaboration, it will not lump those together. They would be separate. So you have to kind of eyeball it. And, but it looks like collaboration, a calendar is a great idea. Things like blogging, um, sharing pictures and class info. So those are all really, really great ideas. I'm going to close this voting now for real on purpose this time. Okay. You can save these, by the way, download them. I, I know teachers that have made t-shirts from the clouds and all kinds of stuff like that. So what we're going to look at today is Google Slides and two learning targets for us. One is to explore the ways that we can make the website part of the online course that we're all suddenly thrust into teaching. And we are actually going to create a site. So in the time we have left, you are going to make a website that has at least two pages. And depending on how comfortable you are, you may even come up with a few more than two. Okay. But before we do that, one last question I have, and you may be wondering this already, is if we have classroom, isn't that a better thing to use to present lessons? Well, Let's take a look at classroom. So I have a class open and I built an assignment earlier today uh, and I was trying to do a lesson on how to make a quiz using Google Forms. So I found all these great resources and I threw them together and I have five different resources here. What are your thoughts? Is this the best way to present information to students if we wanted to provide them with a resource? You could use your yes or no button or chime in with your microphone. Do you think this is the best way for our students to take a look at these resources? You could try a little pause, pounce, bounce, Mike. I could, I could, but Maybe then I'm like afraid of running out of time to do the actual <laughs> website though. Hey, I do see a, a no here. Oh, you saw it? Okay. Yeah, so you know, there's a couple of no's coming in. The, qu the question, Tara, was, is this the best way, if, I, if I'm giving my students a lesson 
and I've put these five resources in here in classroom. Is that the best way to show them a lesson? Does it, does it make a great lesson? Now I see a bunch more, no, so we're up to four no's. It, the problem is we have to jump back and forth. You know, each time I click this, it opens a new tab. It's going to take me all over the place. It is non-linear, non which in some ways is good to be able to jump around. But if I'm just starting out, I really need to go in some kind of a logical order. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are now going to create a website we're going to welcome our students to our class. That will be our homepage. And then I'll show you how to build the start of a lesson. Don't worry, you're not going to build a full lesson. I didn't ask you to do any homework or bring anything with you today. I would like you to go to this website. It is sites.google.com forward slash new, N-E-W. And I will put that in the chat for you as well. So you can click right on that. It will take you in. Now, if you do not have, if your school does not use a Google account, you can make Google sites with a Gmail account that is not affiliated with a school. So anybody can make a free website using a Google account. You don't have to be a teacher or a student. You will, you should by now be to a window that looks similar to mine. One big difference, I have a few websites that I've already created. You may not have many. Give me the thumbs up if you are on this page now. So hit that more button and give me a thumbs up. All right, now those thumbs up are rolling in. This should look very familiar to those of you who use Google Suite. Here is that very familiar in the lower right corner, that rainbow plus sign that we use to make new documents and new folders and things like that. So we are going to click down there in the lower right corner, click that create new site button. And in a moment, the window will change. It's going to make your first page for you, at least start it for you. At the top, just like in, that we see in Google Docs or Slides or Sheets, this is where you will title it. I'm going to call this one Mr. Baker's seventh period. When I hit enter, you'll see that will populate here in this title area as well. So go ahead and name your class. This is naming the site. I shouldn't say class, it's a site. This just happens to be for my class. And then in this area inside what is called the, the header, we can click where it says your page title. And I'm just going to call mine seventh period because I already called it Mr. Baker seventh period. So just to remind them where they are. So you've just created the header and you've given your site a title, a name. That wasn't too difficult, was it? Super, super easy. So Let's start adding some content. Take a look at the right side of the screen. There is a panel located to the right of your page. This panel is very simple. It has three tabs, insert, which is where we'll be starting. Then we'll look at pages and themes as we move through this. The insert tab features all of the things that we can add to the page. We're only going to look at a few of them. I don't want to overwhelm you. We only have a half an hour, but let's hit the basics. So the first thing we need to do is add some kind of a welcome message here. Which one of these four tools do you think I will click to add that welcome message? Unmute and just call it out. Text box. Text box. Text box, I love it. Okay, so I'll hit text box and look at this. Now I have a box and I have a text cursor. So go ahead, make that text box and add a message. Welcome your visitors to the page. Could you use a, an image, like a welcome image? There you absolutely go. could and we'll do, we'll do the image in just one moment. So I will, let's start, we'll start with text and I'll show you how to add a picture. 
So I'll give you about 30 seconds here to add a little greeting. That's nice, Mike. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to add some more text. Um, I could start a new paragraph, right? But what if I want to make a, a new section of text? What do you think I, I'm going to do at this point? Click text box again. Awesome. Text box again. It will pop right below that first text box. And I'll say, I'm going to be really creative. And uh, this is my second text box. Okay. So now you might think, you're probably already wondering, like, Mike, why would I click text box when I could have just hit enter? Well, there's a, there's a reason. Each one of these text boxes that we put in is its own section. So if you look carefully as I hover my mouse, you will see a couple things happen. One, I get a little handle that I can grab this and rearrange it. So one of the reasons we do the, the boxes is so we can quickly move things around on the page. It makes it much easier to do that rather than cutting and then pasting into a different text box. The second thing that's kind of neat about this is when I hover over, I can also duplicate or trash it. But if I can click, if I click on this palette, I can then tell it, well, I want it to be emphasized. Look at the subtle difference. It has a, cr a gray background on it now. Or I could do emphasis two. And now it's really bold. It's really obvious. So my message there, my greeting is very, very obvious. Okay. So the advantage to using the boxes is to get this background. In fact, you could even pick an image. So if you wanted to put an image behind some text, you can do that. Now remember, readability is an issue. We want these to be as, ex as accessible as possible. So I wouldn't put a whole lot of pictures in the background. So I want to put a picture in. What am I going to click now? Images. Image. Images. And let me show you a shortcut as well. If you double click anywhere in the page, as long as you don't have a box already there. So in this empty area, if I double click, you'll get a little UFO looking thing that pops up and that allows you to do the most common things. And here is, I can see images and it will ask me to pick my images. So I can put in an address to an image. So if I find it through a Google image search, I can right click an image and say copy URL. I had, can do a built in Google image search. So I'm going to search for information since this page is about information and oh okay I kind of like this little information logo in a block so I'll just insert that I could also grab things from my Google Drive and now I'm just going to rescale this oh hmm something interesting happened there I kind of <laughs> lost part of my image didn't I now the reason it, it did that is because if you make the box proportionally, proportionally the wrong size, it's going to crop that image. So all I had to do was just make the box a square again. And now here's what's really fun. Wouldn't that information graphic make more sense right up here in that blue bar? Let's just pretend it does. It probably doesn't, but I'm going to grab it. And when I move it, I'll just show you here. It's telling me I have a blue vertical bar. If I drop it here, there, there it goes. If I want to bring it up here, same deal. Now it's there. You can move text boxes and images anywhere on the page. It responds to where you drop things and will redraw the page. In fact, if I wanted to make this text box like a column, all I need to do is resize that and it redraws the box. Are you with me? Give me a yes if you're okay. Give me a no if you're in the fetal position under your desk. 
Excellent. Looks like no one's crying. That's good. Okay. Let me ask you this question using again, yes or no. Is this easier than what you thought it would be? Yeah, everybody say yes. It is so easy to make a web page using Google Sites. Uh, you know, and I hope that you'll. I, I'm hoping that many of you, when we hang up today, are going to say, "I'm going to finish this tonight and come up with a welcome page for my class." This is something that we can share with parents. The community can see. You can control who sees your site, so you could make it just so students can see. But this answers that problem. You know, it's a solution to a problem we always have. Parents don't know what's going on. I sent home letters and they said they don't get it. Give them the link to your web page and post everything there. Then the kids and the parents and the community get to see the things that are cool things going on in your class. Remember, we do still have privacy laws. You know, so I'm sure every district has a sign off form for images. I would certainly not put a carousel of student pictures on my homepage. That, that would not be wise. The other thing I will say is always run it by your administrator when you make a site and when it's public. If it's locked down and only your students can see it, you don't need to worry about it. But if you make it public, you definitely want to at least let your administrator know that you've created that site. That's just a smart thing to do. And Renee loves acronyms and the acronym for that is CYA. Right? And if you need to have that explained to you, I will explain that offline. Thank you, Mike. I thought I was going to get to the day without an acronym. <laughs> You're welcome. I did that just for you. Uh, okay. Thanks. Okay. So if you look in this insert panel and just scroll down a little bit, here are all the other things that you can do. So if you want to put a button in that you can click a button, you came to this web the webinar today by clicking a button on a Google site. The, our mini site is a Google site. So that's how I made those buttons. You just click that. Here's how hard it is. Watch. Button put a name on the button and paste the link into the button. And now you just made a button that will take me to, in this case, Google Sites. Every selected item will have a garbage can or a pencil. So I can just hit the garbage can and away goes the button. This makes all of you webmasters. It's that easy to make a really nice looking site. So I'm not going to bore you by showing you all these things, but all the Google tools are here, YouTube videos, Google map, you can embed a calendar. So if you do a homework calendar, you just click that, pick the calendar and boom, it appears on your website that easy. Okay, let's make a second page because I promised you, you were going to make two pages for your website. So let's do that. Oh, I hope we get this done in the seven minutes we have left. Click pages you will see that you have a home page, right? That's the one we just made. At the bottom of this panel, there's that plus sign again. We don't wanna make a link, we wanna make a new page. And I'm going to call this page unit one. And I click done. And something very interesting happens when you do this. If you look now at your header, two things show up that were not there before, home and unit one. It is creating the menu for you dynamically. So you don't have to be an HTML programmer and make menus. Now, I'm gonna give you a bonus because I really like this group. And everybody's been saying yes and thumbs up. So I appreciate that. If I wanted to make lesson one in unit one, all I need to do is come over unit one, click the kebab, which is those three vertical dots, and I want to add a sub page, and I'm going to call that one lesson one. And now look at my menu. So it's going to build menus for you. It makes it really easy for everyone to find things. So. Let's head back, and I don't know if you didn't have to call yours unit one, I just happened to. Oh good, I'm glad that this is a, a solution for you. So in the unit one, now we talked about Google Classroom. The problem with the Google Classroom lessons is I wanna have a, a linear path. I kinda want my students to go down a page and get things in the order that I want them to have it. Whereas Classroom, 
It's a lot of blocks, a lot of opening new tabs. So this is going to bring everything together. So what I would like you to do on this page, the second page, and you can delete this, we're just practicing. Now that we've created it, go back to our insert panel. And what I would like you to insert is what's called the table of contents. You just click on it and it's going to appear under the header. And what it says right now, it just says add headings and they will appear in your table of contents. Yes, you can add items that are already in Google Classroom because you likely grab those from your drive anyway. So you can just insert things from drive. So now that I've added this table of contents that right now just says this, I am going to insert a text box. I'm going to cheat and double click and bring up my UFO and hit the text box. And I'm going to say that now this is lesson one. Now a very special trick. Instead of normal text, I'm going to make this a heading. And all of a sudden, my text in that placeholder for the table of contents has disappeared. And I now have a lesson one hyperlink. Very interesting. Let's try this. Inside a lesson one, I do activity one. So I'm going to make that not a heading, but a subheading. And finally, let's put activity two here. And again, activity two is going to be a subheading. Now look at this menu. All I need to do now is start adding my regular text. So I start lesson one. I would just tuck it in under this heading. And at this point then I can say, here's a YouTube video that supports this. And I would just search for it or paste the link in. And I build that and now I have a hyperlinked table of contents for this page. So as the page grows vertically and I wanna to go to lesson four, I just hit lesson four and the page will scroll down to lesson four. So this is a way to make that table of contents automatically simply by using headings and subheadings. Any questions on that? Mike, we did have Mary Beth wanted to know, she's assuming that she can add items that are already in her Google Classroom. Yes, any, most of that stuff is coming from, from uh, Drive already. So yes. Just wanna point out that if I change that to small, notice small does not work in the table of contents. The little eyeballs that you see here on my screen, and hopefully you successfully created your menu, your table of contents, if you, if you want to hide certain parts so they don't appear there, clicking that eyeball will dim that out so that hyperlink will disappear. So uh, Mary Beth says she wishes nap time was longer so she had more time to, to explore. <laughs> so when we have those open office hours next week and we'll be posting those on the mini site, um, you know, try some things out when you do have time during nap time and then check in with us next week and, and we can give you some more specifics. Okay. So I don't think, I don't think I lost anybody because I don't see anybody panicking in the, in the chat box. So two other quick things, and then I'll open it up for any questions you have. One is if I switch over to themes, I promised I'd show you that this theme is what is called simple. Let me go back to the home page. So here's simple. Notice there's that blue thing I made with the info button. Watch what happens if I change to purple. Or that nice aqua turquoise color. And I can quickly change if I switch to diplomat, look at the heading. And then I can change that to that nice dark hunter green. I'll show you one more. Here's impression. And I want to make it gold. And I can also come up here and change the image. So if I want to get rid of this globe in the background, so if you want to put a picture of your school or um, 
you know what would be really nice probably right now is if you had a picture of the interior classroom to put up there so the kids remember, mm -hmm. you know, there's what it looked like. I think that would be a really nice kind of social emotional learning touch to show them the, the classroom, but it's still there and everything's still okay at the school. So that's how you change the theme. Last thing, and this is the only difficult thing, I promise this is the only nerd feature of this, is when you go to publish. So everything we've done right now, you can see it is saved in Drive. It automatically saves. I never clicked save. But now to make it live, I hit the publish button. And here's where you have to pay a little bit closer attention. Your website is always going to start with sites.google.com. It will then be followed by your Google domain. Okay, so for me, it's ciu10.org. And then this text is determined by what I put here. This must be unique. So if you type something here that's not available, maybe, so if you just tried to do science or second grade, that may not be available, it will tell you. So it must be unique and it won't let you continue unless it's unique. The other thing, and probably more importantly, is this thing right here, the manage button, because right now, only people at IU10 can see this. So they'd have to have an at ciu10.org address. If I wanna share with parents, I hit manage, this should look very familiar to you. This is the same window we use to share documents. So I'm going to change from anyone at IU10 and say anyone, public, there's the globe, anyone can find the published version. You can even choose certain people. If you wanted to make a website for a club and only have the club members in that site, you can do that there. You can just restrict it to certain people. At this point then, I would hit publish. Here's another nice setting. You can check this box. And if you do that, Google won't be able to find it. It won't be, your site won't be part of the search results. So you could make it public, but when people search for Mr. Baker's class, they aren't going to find it in Google. Okay, even though it's a public site. And at that point, I would hit publish. I'm not going to publish this one, but I'll switch back to one to show you the difference after it's published. Here's our mini site. Since this one has been published, I now have a little arrow here. When I click that, this is where I can change the publishing settings. So if I want to make it private, I can. I can review my changes. So any change you make here to the page does not happen until you hit review changes and publish or hit this publish button. So you can work on a draft. You can add all kinds of new content that you don't want to have visible yet, it won't show till you hit publish, right? So it never replaces your original page until you hit publish. And somebody asked earlier, how do you get rid of it? You would unpublish it, which will pull it back from the web. And then going back to sites.google.com forward slash new, I, I would go in here and let's just delete the one I just made. So I hit the kebab and I would say remove and that will take it out of my sites. That's a lot, but there in, I took 33 minutes, I apologize. <laughs> so we really were in Google Sites for about, uh, probably about 15 to 20 minutes of that time. Using your feedback buttons, or oh, no, go ahead and uh, go ahead and unmute the microphone. What do you think? Easy, surprisingly easy, tell me your thoughts. I think it was pretty easy and it was very helpful. Good. Mike, I think Mary Beth needs us to provide a daycare so that she gets time. Uh, those days, uh, that ship has sailed for me. Develop. But if you want to do it, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I already have daycare for a 19-year-old. So yeah, my that's, baby's that's 19. <laughs> Anybody I've had else? Training. I've had yeah, training. it's easy, and uh, I think I'm going to use it. Excellent. Good. Good. That's what we're hoping is to give you things you can turn around and use right away. That makes me yeah, happy. Thank you. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. I've, I've had training for my other school and they just said, hit this, do this, do this. And we build our websites. <laughs> I've never been back into it because I don't know what I'm doing. And you made it much more clear. Thank oh, you. Okay. I agree. Yeah, and I'm from the same district. I, I agree. <laughs> well, and folks, what you'll see next week, Mike has, had alluded to it, but we're offering just one session a day because we know now folks are 
uh, like probably uh, working in some capacity towards or working with your kids. So we'll do that, but we will have a morning and afternoon kind of an office hour so that if folks have individual like particular questions about anything uh, will be available. So hopefully um, together we are a, a, a very, very powerful IU rather than working as one individual. Other thoughts or other questions, things that you want to know if the sites will do. And hopefully we're clear on why you might use this. I did get a question earlier, you know, why would I use, why, you know, why would I do classroom in this? Well, I, I think the site is a more flexible communication tool um, and, and in, in a lot of ways, a better way to deliver lesson content online because you really can control how they interact with the content. Well, and I have to say Mike, uh, Mike and Renee are definitely more savvy, but the uh, rapidity, the, rap, you know, the speed with which we can turn this around because what Mike was showing our online uh, communication, that toolkit, was done in a day because when we realized there was going to be this uh, closing, we developed all of these topics throughout the course of a day and this was ready to go and Mike had the links on it in that same day. And, so. and an, another thing is, you know, we have approached these sessions for the most part with you, the teachers in mind, but with this tool and when we're learning online and students are using devices at home, imagine st saying to the students, instead of writing an essay in Google Docs or doing a slides presentation, could the students make a four page website that shows what they've learned? Mm -hmm. So turn it into cool. a, a creative tool where you're not just you're not just using it and pushing it out, but the students are using it and then can share their findings. And then in, then in Google Classroom, your assignment is post the link to your web page that you made for the project. And then they can all go in and look at the websites and provide feedback. I have to admit, I'm kind of bummed because I've loved every one of these trainings and we were just told that we don't have enough internet capacity in our district, so we aren't using any um, internet technology-based learning for, for current times anyhow. Oh. Wow. Yes, it was a little sad. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I think that probably eight or nine years ago, we had a lot of discussions uh, about the digital divide, and it was a big concern. There were tons of research uh, tons of research articles out there about the digital divide and it kind of, we kind of forgot about it because there's a saturation it seems of technology and you know kids almost every kid ha regardless of their income seems to have a smartphone of some sort uh, but what we're seeing in my local district and I live outside of IU 10 but there are parents complaining about the online um, you know continuity of education but they're complaining because they only have one device. So elementary kids don't have one-to-one -one devices, the secondary kids do, and but there are parents saying, well, I have one laptop and I'm working from home right now like everybody else, I can't let my kid use it during the day. Uh, so I, I think we're going to, I think you'll see that digital divide idea is gonna come back to the forefront again, uh, and we're going to be discussing that. And I also think using these tools, when we do get back to the schools, I bet a lot of teachers are going to keep some of these tools that we never used before because over the next few weeks, you're going to realize the power of, of using this. And mm -hmm. I think we're going to start seeing the flipped classroom that's also been talked about for five or six years start to come into play. I think this is going to, there, there will be some positives out of this disaster, this pandemic. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll Andy's, forget everything that you taught us by the time we get to go back to school. <laughs> Andy was talking about that um, his sister lives in Tampa, or sister-in-law lives in Tampa, and the challenge there isn't connectivity, it's access to adequate devices in the inner city. Um, and we have the network issue. Um, I, in our curriculum meeting this morning, it was, it was interesting though, several of our Clearfield County schools are going the route of uh, providing by way of bus is that what it sounded like mike that they're going yeah. to provide um internet access for kids my that's my local my local district they the public library set up uh in the parking lot they aimed some new antennas so people can come to the parking lot the 
district already had a couple places like that, but they are hand delivering um, packets and paper mm -hmm. hard copy to those elementary students using the bus routes. And then they're also having a pickup station at the high school between uh, I think four and six for parents who work. So the, yeah, the, there's a lot of hard copy going out too. Uh, and I believe, I'm pretty sure what from what I read, PDE pretty much expects you to be able to make those things available. So I don't think anybody's going to be able to go completely online. I think you have to have some hard copy things as well. Yep. Paper. We still use it. Anything else? All right. Well, I don't see any other questions. No one's popping in with, a, with their microphone to say anything. So thank you for joining us. Please check our site tomorrow. We should have added some things probably by midday, what we're going to be doing next week and a way to see our office hours and join us for those. Uh, but until next time, thank you very much for attending and, uh, and good luck going forward as you begin to implement this online learning. It's certainly going to be an adventure, uh, but we're very glad to have seen everybody, uh, even if it is virtually. So take Thanks care. Thanks to all of you for all these great trainings. Really appreciate it. Thanks. That's nice to hear. Thank you. Teachers have been awesome, period. I just did the math, and since Thursday, in five days, uh, we've had 1,177 teachers in trainings, in our trainings. Okay. Great. So, yeah. Good record. <laughs> you guys have been fantastic. Thank Love you. you so thank much. you.